Do you think it's possible for metal to burn? Let's try it with a teaspoon. This is made of stainless steel. I hold it over the candle flame and uh, it's not burning, it's blackening. There's a deposit of carbon on there, but it certainly is not burning when I bring it out of the flame. However, if you have an adult to help you, mum, dad, science teacher or somebody else, you can investigate burning and find out just how it is possible to make a metal to burn. First of all, let's think about wood. Now you know wood burns, but here's a piece of uh, ceiling timber. If I hold that in the candle flame, will it burn by itself in a few seconds? No, once again it's blackening, but it's not burning. We're getting some carbon formed. However, if I turn that same piece of wood over to the other corner, where I've deliberately splintered it, let's see what happens if we hold those little splinters of wood into the candle flame. Within a few seconds, they are burning with flames of their own. And you know very well that if you're making a barbecue fire, it certainly lights better if you have small pieces of wood. You haven't changed the wood in any way. What you've done, we'll blow that out before it flares up too much, what you've done is allow air and the oxygen in the air to get around the wood and support its burning. One of the best things that'll burn in the science laboratory, as your science teacher has probably told you, is a splintered ice cream stick. Look at that, splintered ice cream stick. Place that in the flame and very quickly, within a few seconds, we have a flame on the end of it. Keep that in mind. Now, back to the metals. How do we make metals burn? Well, the uh, spoon didn't work, but what about a fork? There you've got the bits divided up. More air, more oxygen can get around the prongs of a fork. Will that burn? Try it in the flame. You've guessed the answer already. No, it's nowhere near finely divided. However, if we take something such as uh, aluminium foil, that's a metal, very thin, a lot of air getting around that, what will happen when we hold that in the flame? Doesn't burn, but something is happening. Can you see what's happening? It's actually starting to melt and change shape. Hmm. Can you think of any sort of metal that you find in the kitchen that's even more finely divided than aluminium foil? I wonder if you thought of it. Look at that. What is it? It's steel wool, the sort of material that's used to scour pots and pans. The little threads of steel are actually as fine as your hair. What happens if we hold that in the flame? Hold it over the flame and almost immediately little bits do start to burn. Take it away from the flame and for a few seconds they'll continue to glow and burn, eventually going out. Now all of these things have been burning in ordinary air, which is only about one-fifth oxygen. Let's see how a couple of them burn in pure oxygen. We showed you how to make that a while ago, do you remember? You take hydrogen peroxide, which is a disinfectant or a bleach and often found in the medicine cabinet, you pour some of that into a jar, glass jar, and then you add to that a small amount of potassium permanganate or permanganate of potash, dark purpley coloured crystals, and you only need a few of them. Now, I'm going to get one of these ice cream sticks burning first of all, before I put it in, because as soon as I put those crystals in, we get bubbles of oxygen formed. And if I put that in, the flame burns more brightly. If I shake it out, put it back in, it comes back to life again. That'll happen several times because oxygen is helping the wood to burn even more readily than it normally does. What about the steel wool? Well, let's put a bit more hydrogen peroxide in and oxygen's given off again. We'll get the steel wool burning plunge it into the oxygen and look at that. It looks almost like a sparkler, doesn't it? Fireworks. Because the oxygen is getting around those tiny little threads of steel and they're burning very readily indeed. Be careful where you put that down. I'm going to put it down on this old tile. So all of that shows us that not only do wood and paper burn, but many other things burn as well, including metals. And that's why you need to be very careful when you're using flames of any kind, including a birthday candle.